What's up everybody, I'm the Mangoose, you are awesome, and we finally got some updates out of Predecessor. Still nothing for a potential release date or any console updates, but any news is good news at this point. The main update was a good view of their improved map, which I'll be rolling in the background and linking in the video description below so you can get a good look at it too. The map looks absolutely gorgeous, Fringe just, he keeps outdoing himself. The video opens up with a view entering the dark side jungle, then switches over to pretty much the same view from the light side. You can see that the dark side jungle has more of an autumn feel with faded yellow leaves, while light side is a bit more lush and green. You can see some nice foliage throughout with some waterfalls and splashing water in the jungle. There are also some nice sound effects with birds chirping, frogs croaking, and some drums playing. The map structure looks to be about the same as it's been in the last few tests, they just, they've just made it prettier. One thing I've noticed are some glowing icons on the map. You have some sort of red rune in the jungle pit, which I assume means this is where red buff will spawn. There are also prime guardian heads mounted on some of the pillars, kinda gruesome. And I guess that signifies the ore prime pit. I'm guessing that there's raptor heads for the raptor pit, which somehow strikes me as even creepier since it's like the prime guardian is like a robot. Anyway, whatever. You also see arrow markers in the pit for entrances accessible to heroes with verticality skills like Gideon or Kalari. I think it would be cool if those arrows worked like a racing game and gave everyone who hit them the ability to speed boost and scale the wall. That's probably wishful thinking and that would kind of negate the benefits of certain heroes, but damn, that would be cool, wouldn't it? They also released the main menu theme for the game. It seems to be a bit jungle inspired with a drum heavy epic tune. I quite like the opening music. It's, it's no adrenaline of course, but it has that nice epic feel to it. Along with the menu theme, they also released some of the announcer effects. The enemy core is under attack. First blood. The announcer sounds almost exactly how I remember the Paragon announcer sounding. However, it's their own voice actor. I haven't confirmed this yet, but I'm pretty damn sure that's our boy Daniel Hodge that did much of the much of the announcer work for Undying Games. Sure as fuck sounds like him, and I know he auditioned for it. They also showed us some changes to the hero kits and items. Clary is getting her OG Legacy Ultimate back, where she like sweeps through an area and deals significant damage to anybody she hits. I'm not a Kalari main or 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 even a Kalari player to be honest, but I do mint, I do know many players that love Kalari and they missed this particular ultimate. They also gave her a new ability called Death Mark, which buffs her damage to a target, and they say finishes them off while she escapes. Not sure how that will work if it's like a poison or like damage over time or something like that. Um, hopefully we'll see it in action soon and figure that one out. They also changed Shadow Walk, so it's a camouflage instead of an invisibility. I assume this means she'll have like a predator shimmer. I know this kind of invis works well in isometric MOBAs, but it seems that it may hamstring Kalari in a third person view as you should be able to shoot her ass if you see her outline. I, time will only tell, I guess. Fing meow. Also got some updates. His hamstring decreases the cooldown of Reaping Dash. His shield now gives him movement speed while it lasts, and Earth Shatter, his ultimate, now has a soft reset when it kills an opponent. Even if you have to wait a few seconds for this to reset, I'm sure this will lead to some insane clips of our, our favorite pipe puffing Beyblades systematically destroying entire teams. They showed four different items in the update. I'm not sure if, if these are just overhauled or completely new. They have Overlord, a, a melee improved cleave item. Insanity, an item that gives you stacks as you move and gives you bonus damage when the stacks are consumed. Ameta seems to love these movement stacking items. Para Box, a, a yin and yang inspired item that gives allies 20% increased healing and shielding while enemies have their healing reduced by 60%. This doesn't say when hit by an ability or anything, it just seems like it's an aura that applies a heal reduction. Uh, that seems a bit strong, maybe a little too strong. Finally, we have Leviathan, a tanky item that gives you health stacks when killing minions, and when you have max stacks, you get 10 ability haste, which I assume is cooldown reduction. It also has a passive that gives you 1% of your max health as CDR. It's a cool concept, and I, but I, again, I can see this getting out of hand real quick. For example, if you re remember people used to build tank Shimbi all the time, could you imagine Shimbi with a whole bunch of CDR just spamming wolves like crazy and healing up off of her circle rhythm oh that would be that would be nuts 
They've added a death cam now that allows you to watch your teammates all run away from the team fight after you die, and a much needed rejoin feature for when you get disconnected. Finally, they updated tower hit reactions with animations and sound effects. Not sure what they are, but we'll find out, I'm sure. And that's it for the predecessor update, folks. This was quite a bit of information from them. Predecessor has been very silent this year with minimal community interaction. I'm happy to see them finally giving us some info, but I would much prefer some kind of ballpark estimate of alpha release or information on the progress of console development. Amida Studios has knocked it out of the park with how good their game looks and feels, but they've lost that small company charm they used to have and that makes me sad. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Amida has grown from a six-person unfunded bundle of talent into a right proper company and they've been handling things as such. It's the correct thing for them to do, but I've been tracking predecessors since its infancy and I can't help but feel like a parent watching their child go off to college and leave me all alone. Like the video if you enjoyed it, please, and subscribe for more information on all of the exciting third-person MOBAs on the horizon. But for now, this is the Mangoose signing off. You guys have a good one. Mangoose! Special shout-out to channel members Foolish Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, Ferenth, and Raven.